welcome. Today we will look at the estimation of the fugacity coefficient using easy to measure variables. This will be the last aspect that we look at in this particular module on pure components. We have already seen what a fugacity coefficient is while going through this we will again take a look at what it is and refresh ourselves, refresh our memories with what the fugacity coefficient is. Now first to arrive at the experimental conditions needed to estimate the fugacity coefficient, we are going to begin with the definition itself, the definition of the chemical potential which we had given in the previous module. If you remember this was equation 216, we will mention this once again, dou g t dou n i at constant t p and all other j s different from i, all other n j s different from n i. This was defined as the chemical potential when we first introduced or when we first strengthened the idea of the chemical potential. This was uh, equation 216 way back in the previous module. Again to emphasize this was only one of the ways that we used to introduce the concept of chemical potential in the way we had organized our material. The chemical potential itself is a very powerful concept and the interpretation of the concept of the chemical potential and its applications are definitely not uh, limited to the definition or the first level interpretation that one gets from this definition. For example, by realizing that uh, G t is the total free energy of the closed system, the chemical potential of a component of a phase can be interpreted also as the amount by which the capacity of the phase for doing work other than expansion work is increased per unit amount of the same species added assuming an infinitesimal addition at the constant temperature and pressure. You know, this is uh, this comes from whatever we have seen earlier you know dou g t dou n i at constant t p n j was given as a chemical potential. Now uh, we are looking at g t as the free energy apart from or the capacity to do work apart from p v work and then we said that this is the amount by which it increases when you infinitesimally add one of the species at constant temperature pressure and all other species remaining constant. That is one of the ways to interpret it, it is good to know this. Let us look at it again from this uh, background by realizing that G t is free energy, the chemical potential of a component of a phase can be interpreted as the amount by which the capacity of the phase for doing work is increased or the, the work itself is other than expansion work is increased per unit amount of the same, spe same species added assuming an infinitesimal addition at constant temperature and pressure. And of course, as we have already seen chemical potential is a valid concept for pure components also, although it was introduced using a multi component system. Now let us consider a pure component which means there is no i involved anymore, it is just one component there and therefore variation in i need not be considered in the equations that we wrote earlier. And for such a pure substance dou g t by dou n at constant t and p would become the chemical potential of that substance. Let us call this equation 351A and um, you know it, we need to be clear here that chemical potential is a function of temperature and pressure too, it's just that it is being held constant here and we are defining it as the chemical potential. We said we are considering only a pure component, now let us further restrict ourselves to one mole of that pure component. 
please take please pay some attention to this this is where we are uh, equating gibbs free energy and chemical potential under these conditions so uh, it's good to pay some attention to this one mole of the pure substance for that gt which is uh, the gibbs free energy of the closed system would become equal to the molar uh, value g and from the definition do gt do ni being equal to mu you can actually say that this is equal to mu under the conditions that we are considering now using equation uh, 2.8 which is for a closed system we had written dg equals minus s dt plus v dp using this we can actually write this in terms of mu therefore d mu equals minus s dt plus v dp let us call this equation 352 under the above conditions do mu by do p at constant t is nothing but v because see d mu is a total differential this is again an exact uh, differential in a state variable d mu is uh, do mu do t at constant p d t and do mu do p at constant t d p considering this term alone we can write do mu do p at constant t equals the v that is given here v is easily measurable so we'll just look at that since we have a constant t here let us impose the conditions of constant temperature let's also remind ourselves that we are trying to get at a means of estimating the fugacity coefficient for that we have started out with the chemical potential and we are getting there slowly so let us impose the conditions of constant temperature uh, since it is since we have a t constant here and once we do that pressure becomes the only independent variable we initially said we have uh, constrained it to one mole of a pure substance already and the only variables that we can we are concerned with now with the temperature and pressure and now that we have also kept the temperature constant pressure becomes the only variable if you have uh, a single variable system you don't have to look at partial derivatives anymore they all become total derivatives because the variation is only with respect to one variable and therefore the partial derivatives can be replaced by the total derivative therefore we can write d mu dp equals v and therefore d mu equals v dp equation 353 now from the definition of fugacity which is equation 31b earlier in this module at constant temperature we can write d mu equals rt d ln f this comes directly from the definition of the fugacity itself this is equation 354 if you have some level of confusion just go ahead and uh, look back at equation 3.1b this will become very clear now in this equation we have d mu equals p dp equation 353 and in equation 354 we have d mu equals rt d ln f and they are the same quantities on the left hand side so let us equate the right hand sides if we do that equating the right hand sides of equations 353 and 354 the previous two equations we get rt d ln f equals v dp now let's do some manipulations note that we are getting to the fugacity coefficient so we'll have to arrive at that in some way and to do that let us subtract rt d ln p you know rt d ln p from both sides of the above equation the thinking is something like this you know we we know that fugacity coefficient is f by p so somehow we need to get that into this kind of an expression 
So, if we subtract R t d ln p from both sides of the above equation, we can write this as R t d ln f minus R t d ln p, the ln of a minus ln of b is ln of a by b and therefore, we can write this as R t d ln f by p and the right hand side of course, is V d p minus R t d ln p. Now, d ln p is nothing but 1 by p d p and therefore, V d p minus R t which is already here by p d p which can if you uh, take d p out common we can write V minus R t by p d p. Therefore, d ln f by p equals V by R t minus 1 by p d p. This way, this is the need for writing it this way will become very clear. We are trying to bring it in terms of the compressibility factor. We know that p v by R t is the compressibility factor. Okay, we will get to that in a little while. Before that, let us integrate the above expression from p equals 0 to p equals some finite value p 1. And if we do that, d, uh, the integral of d ln f by p is nothing but ln f by p and uh, the upper limit at p equals p 1 minus ln f by p at the lower limit p equals 0, which equals right hand side integral of 0 to p 1 v by r t minus 1 by p d p. Now, let us recall the definition of the fugacity, fugacity itself. This is again from equation 3.1 b. The uh, if you look at the definition of fugacity, it will say that uh, f tends to p as p tends to 0 or f by p tends to 1 as p tends to 0 and note that this is nothing but the evaluation of ln of f by p at p 10 p going to 0 or p being equal to 0. In such a case, you have a ln 1 here which is nothing but 0 and therefore, the second term on the left hand side of the previous equation is 0 and f by p is the fugacity coefficient at point 1 in this case and therefore, ln of phi 1 or phi 1 you know here we have evaluated f by p which is phi at uh, p equals p 1 and therefore, we will call it ln of phi 1 and ln of phi 1 equals the right hand side which is integral of 0 to p 1 v by r t minus 1 by p d p. Let us call this equation 355, we are almost there. In terms of the compressibility factor, because we have so many methods for compressibility factor. Now, let us try to express this also in terms of the compressibility factor. We know that p v by r t is a compressibility factor. We can write ln of phi 1 as integral of 0 to p 1 this is z by p, this is 1 by p, therefore, this becomes z minus 1 by p d p. Let us call this equation 356. Let us take a look at this equation ln of phi 1 equals integral of 0 to p 1 z minus 1 by p d p. We have on the right hand side all that can be evaluated, we already know methods for evaluating the compressibility factor you know, starting right from uh, the initial part of this module. And therefore, by evaluating this we can get an estimate of the fugacity coefficient at a particular point. In this case 1 denotes the particular point at which the estimation is made. Okay, Let us uh, okay, same thing uh, the methods used to evaluate the compressibility factors under appropriate conditions can be used to evaluate the fugacity coefficient. So, whatever uh, information that we have gathered so far in terms of evaluating z estimating z can directly be, be ported on here to evaluate the fugacity coefficient. To appreciate this a lot better let us work out an example 
this is example 3.5. Let me first uh, read out the example, evaluate the fugacity coefficient for our uh, you know popular model system isopropanol under the conditions given in example 3.4, the same temperature, the same pressure I think it is 200 degrees C and 10 bar they were just given in 3.4. What I would uh, like to tell you first is that this problem is not trivial although it is just one line there evaluate the fugacity coefficient for isopropanol. Uh, that is because on the basis of whatever whatever we have seen so far, whatever we have learned so far the skills that are required to arrive at a, an acceptable solution to this problem calls for uh, are slightly higher level skills, it, it requires some uh, integration also. So, what I will do is give you a lot of time to do this, take about 5 minutes to think about this. The first hint is very clear, you need to use the expression for the fugacity coefficient of course, but may not be very directly. So, take about 5 minutes, think about this and then I will give you some hints and lead you through the solution process. This is, this is not as straightforward as the solutions that we have seen so far. Go ahead please, 5 minutes. <laughs>
see now that you have taken the time to think through this uh, you would have connected some expressions for the phi gas coefficient uh, the one that we just saw ln of uh, phi 1 equals 0 to p 1 z minus 1 by p d p and so on maybe we will have to use that, but I already warned you not very directly. So, let me start giving you some hints. The first hint is try to express that equation 356 that we just saw the expression for ln of phi 1 in terms of reduced properties you know T r P r and so on, because if you do that then uh, the data the amount of data that is needed significantly goes down, because uh, in terms of reduced variables those are applicable for a wide variety of substances pure substances and therefore, try to express this in terms of reduced properties. Go ahead take about uh, 10 minutes and try to express the uh, equation in terms of reduced properties and then I will give you the second hint 10 minutes please. <laughs>
probably you are ready for the second hint now. Uh, we will see the solution when we uh, work out the complete details, but let me give you a hint so that uh, you can start thinking in that direction and pick up such skills which require thinking in one angle and thinking in another angle, putting them together for the purpose at hand. The hint is something like this, we have tables for reduced properties in the appendices express the equation for the fugacity coefficient in terms of those reduced properties, this is a very big hint. Okay. Uh, so, go ahead 10 minutes and see how you can express the equation for the fugacity coefficient the uh, which has already been converted to a reduced property form in terms of these reduced properties the values of which are available in the appendices. I let me probably give you a third hint now it might help you. And those reduced properties are SR 0 by R, SR 1 by R, HR 0 by RTC, HR 1 by RTC. We have already seen that these are available in the tables of your appendix. So, take about 15 minutes and link this up uh, you know in terms of uh, the expression for the fugacity coefficient in terms of these reduced properties to these reduced properties. Take 15 minutes to do it, go ahead please. <laughs>
Okay, some of you would have arrived at the solution which is very good. Let us look at the way of going about the solution. We have already seen from equation 356, the first step was to express this in terms of reduced properties. We, have, we already know that ln of phi 1 is an integral from 0 to p 1 z minus 1 by p d p, this we already know. Now, the way to express this in terms of reduced properties is to replace these actual variables in terms of the reduced variables. We know that p is p c p r and d p as we have already seen is p c which is a constant times d p r. Yeah, okay, I have written down the steps here p c p r and d of p c p r and uh, the p c when it comes out common here it will get cancelled with this and now since um, p c is a constant and the variable of integration is p r the limit of integration should also be in terms of p r this uh, that makes sense because you have this in terms of d p r. If we do that you know it goes from 0 to p r 1 ln of phi 1 becomes integral of 0 to p r 1 z minus 1 by p r d p r it is quite straightforward and no, no major complications in converting this expression from the actual quantities to reduced variables. Now, by transposing equation 3, 349 below you know, think of the second hint that was given try to express it in terms of uh, uh, the other reduced properties S r and H r and so on. Uh, the 349 equation is given here for a quick reference 349 was S r by r equals minus T r P reference to P r 2 integrated do z do T r at constant P r by P r d P r minus integral of p r reference to p r 2 z minus 1 by p r d p r and this can be written as integral of z minus 1 by p r d p r which is this equals s r by r plus t r into integral of p 0 to p r 2 or 0 to p r 2 do z do t r at constant p r d p r by p r this was actually our um, phugastic coefficient uh, expression that we had gotten earlier for in terms of our reduced quantities. So, we have this in terms of S r and something else here. Now, if we can take care of this then we have a means of calculating our phugastic coefficient. <coughs> now, what is this? To get at this let us look at 348 which has again been given here for convenience. If you recall 348 you can go back and take a look at that that will be h r by r t c equals minus t r squared integral p reference p r reference to p r 2 dou z dou t r at constant p r into 1 by p r d p r. Therefore, this integral here which is somewhat this here can be written as minus you know here take a look at this here this is T r squared here you have a T r and therefore, minus 1 by T r into H r by R T c becomes this integral that we are looking for. And therefore, the phugastic coefficient estimation integral of 0 to P r 1 z minus 1 by p r d p r becomes s r by r minus this term has become 1 by t r h r by r t c. Now, the r h s can be written as this is where the link between what is available to us we have values available in terms of s r 0, s r 1, h r 0, h r 1 
therefore we need to relate whatever we have in terms of SR and HR to these H uh, that was here you know you have your SR by R minus 1 by TR HR by RTC we link it up to whatever is available we can write that as SR 0 by R plus omega times SR 1 by R is nothing but SR by R minus 1 by TR HR 0 by RTC plus omega times HR 1 by RTC the one within this flower back bracket is nothing but HR by RTC. Now we can take these values from the tables available in the appendix these are appendices uh, or tables E5, E6, E9 and E10 of appendix E from your textbook Smith, Vanners and Abbott. And this is pretty much similar to what we did in example 3.4 and substituting these values we get SR 0 by R was 0 0.179 and so on, omega is 0 0.665, SR 1 by R was minus 0 0.254, we have already seen this in the previous example. And 1 by TR minus uh, 1 by TR is minus 1 by 0.931, this term HR 0 by RTC was minus 0 0.246 plus omega times HR 1 by RTC minus 0 0.265, this turns out to be 0 0.1053. What was on the left hand side was ln of phi 1 and therefore phi 1 which is the figure stick coefficient at 1 is the exponential of 0 0.1053 which turns out to be 1.111. So, we have kind of integrated whatever we knew in terms of whatever was available and got an estimate of the figastic coefficient. If you want you can go through the solution again to see the various ways in which we went about doing it and uh, in the next class we will do a review of whatever we have done in this module before we go on to the next module, see you then.